So we're into video seven of making that LED illuminated letter. Um, and uh, you can see here the 2D CAD file that we created initially to work out the engineering drawing details and dimensions for my letter A. This will be uh, this will be laser cut uh, to give me the front acrylic sheet. And then here's my precise equivalent uh, letter um, in Fusion 360 for 3D printing. If I right click on the sketch in the timeline history here, go to edit sketch, you can see here um, all of my uh, dimensioning that drives this design to be an exact model of, of this. Some of the dimension lines aren't quite in the same place. For example, my 47.5 here uh, is actually on the drawing. Maybe I can just select that and I can bring it out here. There you go, if that helps. Um, but uh, if everything is in alignment. Um, we've got a radius here, 50 millimeters for these arcs, and here I worked with circles that had a diameter of 30 millimeters, and of course, a diameter 30 is the same as radius 15. Um, okay, let's just stop the sketch there. Now, um, what I still need to do is add in. I'm just going to show you here the S that I made. I need to add in this little cutout for the USB socket. So, <clears throat> so I'm just going to bring that back here. I've got my be your pardon. Got my webcam here. Um, so if I turn this over, uh, you can see what's happening. In fact, let's just flip this over as well. Let's, let's do that and that. So this is the back of the design. Here you can see the cutout for this mini USB socket. Um, and what I'm going to do here is just show you how that, you know, that, that plugs in and that plugs in there. Okay, there it is, lit up. Um, but, you know, when I look at it now, it doesn't look that neat. I, I actually did this um, at home. I didn't have access to the circuit boards and things. I just did a rough cutout and, you know, it's okay. But um, my thinking is that it, it would be much neater if I had um, a smaller window. And I'm also going to make it as well so that um, this, hopefully it's going to focus on here, this little printed circuit board here, I'm going to have it so it's flush like that. In this model here, it's actually offset slightly by the wall thickness of this 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 back um, face here of the 3d print but i want to make it so it's going to be rather than offset by that 2.5 millimeter wall thickness i want it completely flush up against it and i think that's going to be neater and it also means as well that when i plug in my micro usb socket notice how it comes to be quite flush with the edge of the circuit board it's going to push clean up against it so that's my plan what do I need? I need dimensions. Remember that when we're doing product design, product design is going to be driven to a great extent by standardized components. And this is a standardized component. So I'm going to assume here that the micro USB um, sockets that I, that I order and get are going to be the same size as this. If they're not, then obviously the dimensions I'm going to give you now for this um, won't apply. Let's have a look. This is this is actually 13.5 exactly, 13.5 millimeters in width. And I talked in my last video about how standardized components have very logical dimensioning. Well, okay, this is logical to half a millimeter. When you're talking about things this small, half a millimeter is actually quite a significant value, I feel. So that's 13.5, um, and this height here is exactly four. But I'm thinking of, for a bit of tolerance, I'm gonna make that height to be five, and I'm going to make this width 14.5. So 14.5 by five. Okay, let's come back into here. And I'm gonna place it down here too. Now, rather than starting a new sketch, I'm going to edit this existing sketch. And I'm gonna zoom in down here, and I'm going to draw, in the sketch, I'm gonna draw a rectangle. Let's have a two-point rectangle. I'm just gonna draw it roughly in here. And it's doing this problem where it's not but have you noticed how that's not following my cursor properly? Okay, well, I'm just going to draw it out. So it was going to be 5 by 14.5. And that's basically my little window for my printed circuit board to, to look out through, to peer out through. Okay, um, now if I think about this a little bit more, I've actually got this is actually a bit, sorry, here we are. This is a little bit narrower again. Uh, this is actually coming in at 
7.5. Okay, so if I make that 8.5 and let me see, the printed circuit board is 1.5, 2.5. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going, this is getting quite complicated, so I'm actually going to revert to something low tech. I'm going to do a sketch. So let me pause the video. So I, I really want to highlight here the importance of of drawing, of sketching things out, um, and making sure that uh, you know you you you're working three dimensions in order to to create good designs. So some aspects of design um, is about sketching things as you know as the form. You want to try and create the form of your object, what it's going to look like when it's sitting on the desk, or what it's going to look like when um, you see it on 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 the the the, uh, the floor. Sorry, the floor, the shop floor. When you see it, or you see it in the shop. That's what I'm trying to say. You see something in the shops, you think, "Oh, that's beautiful. I want one of those." Um, but uh, in this case, I'm going to sketch because I'm trying to create a very detailed, specific cutout. Um, and rather than trying to kind of lock everything into my brain, I'm going to draw it out so that not only is it clarifying for myself what's happening, but I can also present it to uh, another engineer or another designer and discuss the design with them. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick sketch here of what I'm trying to achieve. Um, so this is effectively going to be my cutout. Now, it should be roughly the same size as this, and it's not quite, but I'm going to throw the dimensions in shortly anyway. And then I've got my PCB there, and then this, in effect, is going to be my my micro USB socket. So that's effectively what I've got. Now I already know that this dimension here is going to be 14.5. Let's try and get a neater arrowhead there. Okay, uh, and I also know as well that this distance here get one arrow neat and the other one's a mess. This is five. Now I also want to highlight here how I'm trying to use these engineering drawing standards. Um, you know I'm not just randomly drawing lines in here, I am actually trying to show these dimensional lines with arrowheads and the numbers appropriately positioned. Should I put a point zero on there? Possibly I should. I'm not going to go to two decimal places. Um, like it is in Fusion 360. Okay, now I've got some more details here that I wanted to put in. Let's have a look here. I was saying that this was, so that was going to be 7.5, but for tolerance, I'm going to specify this here. Again, my arrowheads are going messy. This is going to be 8.5, and then my printed circuit board was coming in at 1.5 so I'm going to have this height here is going to be 2.5 okay which means that that distance is also going to be get the right one this distance is going to be yep, 2. no I'm happy with that I'm happy with that we're good just double check Okay, so mark twice, cut once, double check everything, yeah? So these are the dimensions I want to work with. And now I've got that in place, I think I'm going to find it a lot easier to be able to do this drawing right here. So let's just come to a line tool here. What I want to do, let's bring that across so I can see everything. What I want to do is draw a horizontal line across here, get a dimension line, press D there. So that distance there wants to be 2.5 over constrained. Ah, I can see what's happening. It's saying it's over constrained, which seems strange, but it's because this has identified it. Excuse me a second. This symbol here shows a midpoint constraint. Can you see down there? That's a midpoint. So it's already defined that line there to be the midpoint between this top edge and the bottom edge. So rather than saying 2.5, it's just saying midpoint here. 
Fair enough, I'll let Fusion 360 do its magic. And then I've got here 8.5, so let's just have some more lines. There's going to be a line there. There's going to be a line there. Okay, and I need to have another dimension line. So this is going to be 8.5. And I don't have the dimension in here, but let's have a see. That's going to 14.5 minus 8.5. Well, it's going to be 14 minus 8, which is 6. So that tells me that this point, this value here, is going to be 3. Okay, 3, 6, 4. Yep, yeah, perfect. So let's have a see. The distance from there to there, that distance there, is going to be 3. So now what I've got is this kind of cutout. In fact, what I'm going to do now is press T for trim. I'm going to trim that line back and look, there's my profile. And that's looking really, really cool. It says constraints were removed during the operation. OK, well, I think it's to do with this, this line here. Um, OK, it's still fine. Let's now just press the escape key so I lose that trim tool. There's my cutout and I want to move this if I select that. Can I now press the M key and can I move this? Ah, I have to select everything. So I'm going to select all of that. I'm going to move it down. OK, now I actually want it to be flush with this bottom edge here. Now notice if I just expand, can I expand this? It's not letting me, but I can scroll down. See, I've moved down 5.5. I want to be 5.5, 5.5, not 5, 5.5. Okay, it's there. Um, I'm going to confirm that. Um, and then I want it to be kind of midpoint to this shape. Now, this shape is 52.5. Now, that is not easy. Okay, well, 52.5 divided by... 2 is going to be 25 plus 1.25, 26.25. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, uh, let's have a see. Okay, you know what? I could do a midpoint thing, couldn't I? Let's just do again some calculations on paper. So, let's have a see. I've got, what is it? 52. 0.5 there uh, divided by 2 is going to be 26.25 so we know that but then let's have a C I want to have half of 14.5 is going to be 7.25 and then I want to take 26.25 and take away 7.25 which is going to give me a total of 19 millimeters. So that's telling me that the distance between, sorry, the dimension line, the distance between that our origin and this line here wants to be 19 millimeters. And if it is, then that should be perfectly in the center. Let's see. Well, I could do. Let's let's just do something else here. Let's escape that. Let's come to inspect. Let's get that measurement tool here. I'm going to measure the distance from there to there. That is 16.5, and the distance from there to there. Oh, hello. 16.5. There you are. Perfect. So point proven that's working now this is not fully defined it's not a fully defined sketch here there's a few things I'm missing I think the key thing I'm missing here is I haven't locked it into the origin um, I am not going to worry about it I mean if, if I wanted to let's just see if I could could I link that into there could I specify that distance there to be 2.5 yeah there we are look done finished okay so um, rather than moving it, I've just literally locked that height into the the origin, and now it's a fully defined sketch. Fine, I'm happy. Where are we? 14 minutes. Okay, let's stop the sketch there. You notice that that sketch has made absolutely no difference at all to the extrusion. If I just bring that sketch back in again, I can see the cutouts there, but nothing's changed. Um, and in fact, actually, something else has just occurred to me here. Yep, 
something else has just occurred. I've got my soldering on this pad here and I feel as if that soldering might be lifting this up a little bit. So you know what I'm going to do here? I, I'm going to fiddle again. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to zoom in on this and because I've got that solder to consider I'm going to change this to be 2.75. I'm going to give a quarter of a millimeter spacing here to accommodate or do I make it more? Do I make it three? There we are. Done. That's to accommodate any solder and the, th and the thickness of the glue from the glue gun so it's still going to be nice and flush. Done. Okay. Magic. Right. Let's now modify the extrusion so it, it includes that cutout. Now, if you remember, this extrusion here was for the thickness of the walls and this extrusion was for this back plate. And it's this back plate extrusion I need to modify. I'm going to edit that feature and all I'm going to do is change the profile. I'm going to deselect that profile and instead um, I'm going to, I'm going to have to select all again, aren't I? I have to select this, I have to select this, I'm going to select this, but I'm not, oh, hang on, and I'm going to select this, and I'm going to select that, aha, there we go, looking beautiful, but I'm not going to select the actual cutout for my plug, uh, and this, it seems bizarre, it's saying a new body, but actually, because it's rollback time here, that's correct, there you go. And then, if you remember, this feature was joining on. Okay, so that is it. That, ladies and gentlemen, is my 3D print finished with my little cutout there for my USB plug. <sighs> you know, thinking about this, should I have actually placed that down here because there's more space? Should I have positioned it in this corner? Well, it's there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do uh, is uh, get that ready for, for 3D printing. In fact, I'm, I'll do it as a separate video. It'll be a short one. Stopping there, uh, and I'll do the 3D print uh, settings next.